In this movie, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the Unified Modeling Language, or UML, which is what this course is all about. I'll say a little bit about what UML is, what it is not, why it's important, and finally, something about professional certification. UML stands for the Unified Modeling Language. It was developed originally by the Rational Software Corporation, which is now part of IBM. The project started in 1994, and the draft UML 0.8 was launched in 1995, followed by version 0.9 in 1996. In 1997, version 1.0 was offered to the Object Management Group, the OMG, in response to a call for a standard notation. At the time, there were many different object-oriented modelling notations available, all competing for users. Rational brought together three of the proponents of different notations and persuaded them to work together to come up with a notation that would unify their different approaches. The three originators were Eva Jakobsen, James Rumbaugh and Grady Booch, each of whom had published a book, in some cases with other authors, proposing their notation. UML is a modelling language. You can use it to produce models of software systems. It provides concepts, which are the things of interest in modelling software systems, an agreed semantics, which means that each of those concepts has a defined meaning, a notation, which tells the user how to represent the concepts graphically, or in some cases in text format. An organization mechanism, which enables users to structure and manage their models. And extension mechanisms, which mean that UML can be used to model new concepts in specific domains or types of systems, and has a formal way of doing that. UML is a standard, and is documented by a specification that currently runs to over 800 pages. Version 2.4.2 is the current standard of the International Standards Organization as ISO 19505. It's maintained by the Object Management Group, which also maintains a number of other standards, such as CORBA and BPMN. At the time of recording this course, the current version is 2.5. The most significant changes between 2.4 and 2.5 related to a restructuring of the specification from two documents into one. As a standard, it's been adopted by IT companies and tool vendors worldwide, and they're members of the Object Management Group and represented on the committees that manage UML. It's also used by the OMG to specify other standards. The UML standard is itself specified in UML, and in the same way it's used to provide a standard language for specifying a number of other standards maintained by the OMG. It's important to be clear what the UML is not. It is not a modeling tool or case tool, Though many vendors provide modeling tools that are based on the standard or incorporate parts of the standard into other software tools, such as integrated development environments, in order to allow users to visualize aspects of their code. It's not a programming language. It models abstractions of system concepts. However, there is an approach called model-driven architecture that seeks to generate code from models. Typically, this results in the creation of partially complete code that has to be further edited. And it's not an analysis and design methodology, method or process. Knowing the notation of UML doesn't mean that you automatically understand how to use it to develop a software system as part of a system development project. Indeed, different types of systems in different contexts may require different approaches to the software development lifecycle. At the time that UML was launched, the three authors also launched the Unified Software Development Process. And there have been a number of evolutions of that, including some for more agile projects. The important thing to note is that you need to have a plan or method for how you'll use UML in a project. Why then is UML important? The obvious reason is that it unified the three notations of the authors of the original standard and that it could represent the concept in others. In fact, UML has become the de facto standard for modeling software systems. There are other standards out there in related areas, such as SysML for systems engineering, but they tend to be related to UML. As well as a standard notation, it provides mechanisms for models to be serialized into a file format that allows them to be moved between compliant modeling tools. This means that companies can work with partners or suppliers that use different tools. I mentioned that UML is used to specify other standards, and this is done through the Meta Object Facility, MOF. From your point of view, it should mean that you only need to learn one notation for object-oriented software development, though there are obviously others for architecture, systems engineering, or business process modeling. You'll also find that it's the standard notation used in books on other software development subjects when the authors want to visualize classes or other object-oriented concepts. Design patterns are usually documented in UML and most books on the subject use it. And finally, it's important because you can extend it to cover specific domains or aspects of a system 
through the profile extension mechanism, which is beyond the scope of a beginner's course. The OMG has developed a professional certification program for UML, known as the OMG Certified UML Professional, OCUP. The first version was quite theoretical, and version 2, which is relatively new, has more of a focus on practical usage of UML. The certification is assessed at three levels, foundation, intermediate and advanced. At the time of recording this video, only foundation has been upgraded to version 2, so intermediate and advanced certification are still based on the old syllabus. That may well have changed by the time you hear this, so check out the OCUP page on the OMG website. This course is roughly equivalent to the foundation level, though it doesn't set out specifically to address the content of the foundation certificate. If you're interested in certification, have a look at the web page at http colon slash slash www.omg.org slash ocup2 slash index.htm. In particular, look at the coverage map, which lists the UML concepts covered at foundation level. They do use the terminology from the specification, and in my experience, some of that terminology isn't widely known or used in industry, so you may want to download the specification and check some of the terms. There aren't any books on OCUP 2 certification at the moment, though again that may change. Books written for OCUP 1 are not relevant to OCUP 2. The foundation certification also includes questions that test your understanding of why we model systems before building them, and the OCUP website suggests some reading. In fact, we'll begin the next chapter with a movie on models and diagrams, and that includes some comments on why we model. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.